In this recording I'm going to look at a vital tool in modern PHP application development and that is Composer. Composer is a dependency manager for PHP. Its primary use is for integrating open source packages into our applications but it also has other uses and other tools such as autoloading which we'll also have a look at in this recording. First of all I'll show you how to download and how to install it. So the address is at the top of the screen, go to the download page and there's four commands which we need to paste into our terminal. Now it doesn't matter what folder you run these commands from because we're going to install it globally so that it's always available to us on our machine. The way we do that is by putting in a directory which is part of your path. So here are the instructions if you're using Mac or Linux which are quite simple. Paste that in there. And believe it or not that's all I need to do to install it globally. So I'll just type in Composer and something should come up for this. And there you go. Let's go and look at it in a bigger terminal, which will make it easier to see what's going on. So as you can see, quite a lot of commands. You should see something like this. You don't need to know about all these commands at the moment. I'll show you the main ones that we're going to use. It's a long time since I've done this on Windows, but it looks like the instructions are slightly different. It tells you to change the directory, which is on your path, and then run the installer. The address for the Windows instructions is on your screen. It looks like it should be fairly straightforward for you to do. For this one we're going to start a brand new chapter so I'm making a new directory chapter 5. I'll cd into the chapter 5 directory and then from here I'm going to require my first package. So I do that with this command composer require symphony forward slash var hyphen dumper. This is a package which is made by the symphony team as you can see there it says installing symphony var dumper. The two lines before that are dependencies so in order for var dumper to work it also needs to install dependencies first in your chapter 5 folder you'll notice some new arrivals this one here is the composer json file this is basically your configuration it's where you tell composer what you would like it to do as you can see here it's installed symphony and var dumper version 5.2 or greater up to the next major version which would be 6. Don't be too concerned with versioning at the moment because it's something which will cover more and it's also something which you pick up the more that you use Composer. This is a Composer lock file and this file locks your dependencies of your project to a known fixed state. So whilst it looks quite scary, don't worry about it because you do not touch this file. This is written for you by Composer. If you need to make changes, you make those in the Composer JSON file, which is much simpler. And I'm actually going to show you how to do that shortly. First, let's look in our vendor folder. This was also added by Composer and this is where our packages, actual uh, physical packages actually live. So here you can see the var dumper. Don't worry, I'll show you what it does shortly, but just have a look how much work has actually gone into this. And this is what Composer is all about really. Someone's put a lot of time and effort, a lot of work into solving a problem which other developers might face in their applications or some kind of functionality which you might need in your applications. You don't have to go and write it all yourself. Other people have sometimes done the hard work for you. And now that I've shown you that, I'm actually going to delete the vendor folder and I'm going to delete the composer lock file. I'll be left with just the composer JSON file. So you can start a project with just a composer JSON file and you just need to run composer install and it will install your dependencies which are specified in this file. So the way we do that is with composer install and it will install everything which is in your composer JSON file. So there could be quite a lot of packages there. The difference between the command that we first run composer require was that we were just requiring one particular package. If you like this video, it's part of a complete course that will teach you everything that a PHP developer needs to know. Click the link below to check it out. Let me show you Packagist. So the address is on the screen. This is the main Composer repository and this is where you can come and look for packages which you might want to use in your project. As an example, let's look for the var dumper which we installed in our project. So I type var into the search box. Very good search functionality. Top result, Symphony var dumper. I click on that and it takes me to the page. And at the very top here, it has the exact command which is needed in order to install it, which you can just copy and paste. Here's a few things to look out for. As you can see here, over 184 million installs. The number of installs will give you an idea of how dependable the package might be. 
Then we have the address for the GitHub repository, which is the main repo. And down here on our left hand side, we have the dependencies. So this section here is very useful if you want to check if a package is compatible with your version of PHP. And you'll notice these two dependencies here match what was installed before the Symfony VAR dumper. So hopefully this is all starting to make sense to you. Let me now show you how to auto load third party packages into a project. So inside of chapter five, create a public folder. Inside of there, create a index.php file. At the very top of this file, the first thing I'm going to do is require an auto load file, which comes from Composer and lives in the vendor folder. And one thing I can tell you about this auto loader is that it's way more sophisticated than the one I created in chapter four. So that's the file there inside of the vendor folder. At this stage, don't be too concerned about how it works. We're more concerned with what it can do for us. And the first thing I'm going to get it to do for us is to auto load the VAR dumper, which we installed. So the VAR dumper is a tool for debugging and it makes it very easy for us to visually analyze variables. So what we're going to do here is dump out a data array, which I created. I can just add it to my file like this, which wouldn't work if we didn't have auto loading. I'll go to my terminal and just run the file, which I can do with PHP public forward slash index. And this is what it dumps out. So as you can see, it's colored, it's very simple to read, and it's much better than the alternatives. Let me show you what those are to remind you. Here is var dump, so I'll go and run it again. As you can see, not as easy to read. I know which one I prefer to use. Let's have a look at printr, which is also something that we've used. Again, not as good, not as easy to read. Now, I've only used just a, a minimum little amount of data here. Var dumper really comes into its own when you're using um, a lot of data, big classes, things like that, or collections. What I'll show you now is some more auto loading and how we can configure our auto loading to be more customized for our project. So inside of the chapter five folder, I've created a folder called source SRC. Inside of there, I've created a folder called models. And then inside of that, I'm creating a class called user. And I'm gonna give this a namespace of app models. So the first observation you might have when you look at this is that the namespace that I've given this uh, user class doesn't follow the same pattern as what I've used for the folder structure. All will be revealed on that shortly. First off, let's just add a couple of properties to this. I'm gonna add an ID, which is an integer, and a name, which is a string. And then I'm gonna use a bit of PHP Storm's inbuilt magic to automatically generate my getters and setters. Apologies if you're not using PHP Storm, but we've written plenty of getters and setters up to this point. I'm sure you don't want to sit and watch me write four more. Let's just concentrate on the new stuff for now. So. Fairly standard getters and setters. Let's now go over and use our user class in our index.php file. So Gary equals new app models user. And then I'm going to set the ID with Gary set ID and then Gary set name. And I'll just set the name to my name, Gary Clark. And then what I'm going to attempt to do is var dump the Gary variable using the var dumper. So over to the terminal, run the file again. As you can see, I have an uncore error class app models user not found in index.php. So that hasn't auto loaded. So the auto loader knows exactly how to auto load the files from the vendor folder, but we need to provide it with instructions on how to load our classes in our folders. And the place where we do that is in the composer JSON file. So add a key underneath the require key, auto load in double quotes. Inside that we need a key, which is PSR-4. PSR-4 is an auto loading standard. It describes a specification for auto loading classes from file paths. What I'm doing here is I'm telling the auto loader to map the app namespace to the source folder. At the top level there is the app namespace. Make sure your JSON is formatted exactly the same as mine or you'll get errors. And let's go over to the terminal and run this again. I can press up to run my last command and as you can see, we're still getting the same error. The reason for that is because we still need to tell Composer to rewrite its auto loading files to include this new rule. I do that with Composer dump hyphen 
auto load and you can also specify the hyphen o on the end which means optimized but don't worry about that too much as you can see it's generated optimized auto load files containing 69 classes and the good news is that one of those classes will be our user model and the rest will be the var dumper classes and as you can see when we run this again the uh, gary variable is dumped out to the console and all is looking good again so Something to note is that the var dumper tool that we've been using here is something that you typically use just in development and you can actually specify to Composer that you want to require it only for development. And then when you run Composer and install your packages in a production environment, you can ignore those development packages which ain't needed and keep your application nice and slim. Why not reach out to me in the comments and tell me what made you watch this video. Maybe there's something that either myself or my subscribers can help you with. If you got value from what you've watched, then give it a thumbs up and don't hesitate to share if you want to help other developers like yourself. That's what good developers do. And finally, if you want YouTube to show you more of my stuff, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I release new material every few days. Details of my schedule can be found on the community tab of my YouTube channel homepage. I'll see you in the next one.